Rema 1. That's what they call Rema 1. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So we appreciate God and we receive the Rema 1. I'm telling you the truth. To some of you that are here, I am praying not just to some, but to all of us that are here. May 2025 refer to this season of the now. And it shall be from this now that 2025 shall write and say it was in this now moment that somebody utilized the presence of God in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Glory and glory be to God. Amen. So why don't you take this moment as we once again appreciate our mother, the oracle of God, Dr. Prophetess Emmanuel Agnes, ma'am. I'll tell you, I'll tell you why, why it is a blessing. Hallelujah. Because from as early as four o'clock, the heavens was busy being bombarded. It was being sorted out. Praise the name of the Lord. So we don't take it for granted when you have your Moses, you have a leader that always goes ahead of you. If you hear me say amen. And what is interesting is that when, she, when, when, when she's leading prayers, you never hear her praying for herself. She's praying for the church. You can imagine. She's praying for the people of I am. She's praying for, make use, tell your neighbor, make use of the now. You may never know 2025 may be a burden for Europe, and that's where maybe she will be operating from. Hallelujah. So make use of the now. Amen. If I, uh, let me speak in parables. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. Uh, yes, allow me as well appreciate our spiritual cover, Bishop Paul Chiquem and Prophetess Miriam Obina. Hallelujah. We are so much indebted because they're not just our cover, but those are sentries, those are stewards, those, that is a spiritual cover, that is a spiritual hierarchy under which we sit. And when you have that, you know that you are safe. Amen. Allow me as well appreciate the servants of God. Um, um, all the graces that are in the house, the apostolic grace, the pastoral grace, the prophetic grace. I will not divulge into them because already Pastor Brian has, 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 has done justice to that area and, and clearly... Um, clarified on the positions and titles, so I just want to honor and give glory to God for the men and women of God in the house that are with us. All of you men and women of God, come on, let us appreciate you. And above all, we bless the Spirit of God. It is such a powerful blessing to be in His presence by the grace of God. Hallelujah. Please take your wonderful seat. In Jesus' mighty name. Like I've said once again, um, make use of the now moment in Jesus' mighty name. Okay, Father, in the name of Jesus, as we come once again this morning, we welcome the Spirit of God as He speaks to us in the Word. Because through Christ, grace and truth was ministered unto us. And you say that the words I speak are truth. And it is by this truth that we are set free. So we stand again as the Spirit of God, you divulge truth to us. That our inner man shall be a fruitful field unto which these seeds are going to be planted. To you be all the glory and all the adoration. For we have prayed in Jesus' mighty name. And the church say amen. Yes, we are still in the subject of prayer and fasting and um, uh, we want to thank God. Um, I think this week, um, Apostle Isaac has been on the WhatsApp page and he has been sharing, uh, throwing tidbits here and there concerning the subject of prayer and fasting. Glory be to God. And uh, of course, going back to one of the theme scriptures that we used, Jesus is speaking to the church in Matthew chapter 6. And he gives three basic foundations. I pray the ushers will help us with the, with the entrance. Hallelujah. 
and he gives three basic foundations about the church because this is what makes the church powerful. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. When Jesus is speaking, he clearly clarifies Matthew 6. And uh, if we are to go through, we are not going to read the whole thing, but specifically on the subject of um, what we are handling this morning. Matthew chapter number 6. Jesus makes a reference and he is speaking to us as the church. Now Matthew, of course, for those of you that know um, what he's talking about, he speaks about three basic foundations of the church. No ministry can survive without these three basic foundations. And when he speaks about the church, we know that he is not talking about a building. Actually, the term church is what the English refer to it. But when Jesus is speaking to us as the church, it is called ecclesia. Amen. And ecclesia, of course, is uh, now it is Latin. The Latin, of course, there, of course, there's a religion that refers to it as, as ecclesia. Amen. But ecclesia is a cabinet. Just as the head of state, when he is calling for a meeting, he has a team of people specifically that he chooses. You know that the Lord chose you? He's the one that drew you to him to confess him. Amen. We are an ecclesia, a cabinet meeting. We are a cabinet team. And it is this team by which the president rules the nation. He cannot rule alone. He rules the nation using a cabinet. I have news for you. Jesus, uh, God the Father, has delegated authority that now you are the extended delegation of his authority on this earth. So church is not just you coming and speaking in tongues. Church is a cabinet. That is why when he tells Peter, he says, I will build my church. I will build my cabinet. And how you are going to know that this cabinet is functioning, that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That is who we are. We are a cabinet. Glory be to God. So he is speaking to the church and he gives us three basic foundations by which the church has to stand. Amen. The first foundation, of course, when you read Matthew chapter 6 and verse 1 to verse 4, hallelujah, he is talking about giving. No church can survive when it does not give. Hallelujah. Of course, you read it in your time because I'm just, I just want to div divulge where we, we, we are in the discussion this week. Amen. Now, when you get down to Matthew 5, hallelujah, when you get down to Matthew chapter number 5, from verse, uh, uh, Matthew 6, from verse 5 down to verse 15, the second foundation of the church is prayer. No church can survive minus prayer. That is a fact. No church can survive minus prayer. Glory be to God. And see how interesting it is about the third foundation of the church. Jesus is spelling out what builds the church. And when you get down to the third foundation of the church, brothers and sisters, in Matthew 16. Matthew 6, 16 to 18. Because that is what we are referring to and we are going to read it. 16 says, Moreover, when you fast, he speaks of the third foundation as what? Fasting. So he speaks about giving, he speaks about prayer, and he speaks about fasting. Go search out any ministry that is standing. It stands on the three basic foundations. The others, of course, are keys. Hallelujah. Wisdom is a key. The others, of course, come. But these are the three things that Jesus spells out. And he says, maybe let us now refer to verse 16 because that is where we are. Amen. Hallelujah. This is the third key. There are many keys. He says, moreover, when you fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. 
But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thy head and wash thy face, that thou appear unto men, not unto men to fast, but unto thy father which is in secret, and thy father which is in secret shall reward you openly. Hallelujah. So, Jesus spells out three powerful foundations that the church or the ecclesia or the cabinet moves by. And of course we know in Matthew 16, he tells Peter, I'm giving you the keys of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So we are speaking about fasting. And of course, the scripture reference is Matthew 17. We shared that the other time last Sunday. And that is where we are again referring to in Matthew 17. Hallelujah. So quickly, let us get there to Matthew 17. It's a very interesting story that unfolds. Hallelujah. And uh, by the way, until this time, I was searching out the scriptures. Until this time, the disciples of Jesus had not fasted. That is why when the Pharisees came and asked him, John has disciples who fast. The Pharisees have disciples who fast. How come your disciples don't fast? Jesus tells them, you know, it is because they are still with the bridegroom. So <laughs> his disciples... His disciples were in laissez-faire. They were just in a time of enjoying because they knew Jesus is with us. Ah, mama will pray for us. <laughs> we are safe. Hallelujah. So, it is the first time Jesus introduces to them the principle of fasting. It is after they are faced by a condition. It is so interesting. You know, because I sat down and I was like, how does Jesus make a drawing conclusion? How does he make a drawing remark concerning this situation? Amen. And of course, the story is as this. In Matthew, 6, in Matthew 17. Hallelujah. Something interesting is going on. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is what the story says in Matthew chapter number 17. And of course... We are down here in verse number 14. And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a, a lunatic. And so vexed for often times, he falls into the fire and often into the water. And I brought him to your disciples. <laughs> And they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. He said, oh, faith. See, this one is not referring to the congregation that was watching healing. He is talking to the generation of disciples that were with him. O oh, faithless and ah, O oh, faithless and perverse. He is not speaking to the crowds that were coming and wanting a miracle. He is talking to the generation of disciples that were around him. I have ministries. After us, there's another generation that shall come. But, but, but I pray that by this generation, we shall, as Pastor Brian has said, we shall fulfill our mandate. Glory be to God. We shall fulfill our mandate as the calling. Amen. So he's speaking and he's telling them, Oh, faithless and perverse generation. How long will I be with you? You think I'm going to be with you all this time? You think I'm going to always be the one covering you? No. How long will I always be the one to do this work for you? Hmm. And then Jesus rebuked the devil. And he departed out of him. And the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples of Jesus about and said, Why could we not cast one of the things I loved about the disciples of Jesus is this. Is that they always, when they did not have a solution, they always asked questions. Hallelujah. Verse number 20. And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible to you. 
Can you read verse 21 loudly, three and go? Uh -huh. However, now, English, one of the things about the English language is this. Amen. I did not do English much, but at least when you read scriptures, there's something about the, 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 the way it's phrased. He tells them that, listen, with this one, it is about your faith that when you speak to mountains, it will move. Then he introduces them to the secret. He says, however, for this situation, this demon specifically, this situation, and remember, it is not the first time that the disciples are not chasing demons. Remember when he sends them two by two and tells them, go. They even go and come back and tell them, ah, master, we saw demons living. We saw people being delivered. It is not the first time. Hallelujah. But then now they come back to this one. And all the nine, because Jesus was with you on the mountain, all the nine fail. And they ask him, Master, why? And he says, however with this one, however because of this one, it cannot go but by prayer and fasting. That is the first time he introduces them to the mystery of fasting. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So in other words, Jesus is introducing to them a certain mystery. However, this one does not live but by prayer and fasting. I remember we began off and we were sharing because we are looking at the importance. Why does Jesus emphasize prayer and fasting? Why? What is the essence of of this prayer and fasting by the grace of God. It is where we are. That when you understand this, my brother and sister, you shall be a generation of disciples. Huh? Thank God for the generations of the disciples that came before us. The generation of the Balabi Akubos, because even that one, when they tell you of the story of how this man of God conducted his life, ah, no wonder God had to move. And his secret, he had many, but one of the keys that he always emphasized was the key of prayer and fasting. Glory be to God. Amen. So Jesus is telling them, why does he emphasize the, 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 the mystery of prayer and fasting? Number one, because this. Because why is fasting as a church, why is it one of the ultimate systems that Jesus left us as his followers. Not as a religion, not as a discipline, but it is part and parcel of our lives. Why? Because number one, fasting is a key to authority. Hallelujah. Fasting is a key to authority. It is a representation of authority. If you hear me say amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Ah, I don't tell you. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. You see, I'll tell you this. The natural world responds to the spiritual world. We all know this. Amen. But more so, the spiritual world responds to men of authority. Authority is so, is so mysterious. Do you know? The Bible says, I've given you, what does Luke 19? Luke 10, 19. Let us go there and read. Luke 10 and 19. Hear what the Bible says. Amen. Jesus emphasizes, whenever you see that, you know that when you see Jesus making a statement, what does he say? Luke 10 and verse 19. He says what? Behold what? Behold, I give you the authority. He says, behold, I grant you authority. To trample on serpents and Did you hear? Scorpions. Did you hear? He says, I give you authority. Now, when he says, I grant you authority. Hallelujah. That means it is not just you saying in the name of Jesus, go. No. He is telling you that I grant you authority. Hallelujah. I grant you a key. I grant you permission. I grant you, oh, what, what other one? What other one? You see, you see, when we speak of authority, we, the best example is the traffic policeman. 
What is so funny with, with, with these people is this, that some of them can be small in nature. They can be very tiny. But they have, they will, they will, you know, authority is so spiritual, by the way. They will, this, 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 this aura of, of power around them that when he stands in the road, you, as, you experience, though I've reset, they have now begun, they have now begun putting, uh, I don't know why I've reset, now they put traffic policemen, now you put, uh, they put men of size now, they put men that have some size. But that time before, there were men that were very, very small in size. But when he stands in the way and he wants to put, he wants to command a truck that is coming. Hallelujah. He wants to, to, to tell it to park. He'll just stand in the way. Hmm. And say, ah. <laughs> Can you imagine? The truck, the truck has the power to mold this guy. You, when we speak about the truck, 10,000 10, tons, this thing, this thing when it comes, it can when it, you, you've heard of stories, when it, when, when, it is, when it does not have brakes and it rams into vehicles, <laughs> by the time it stops, that is what power is. Huh? But authority, this guy does not speak a word. I want to show you why, why fasting is very powerful. This one does not even speak a word. This traffic policeman does not even speak a word. All he does is that when he stands, he does this. Somehow the truck driver understands that they are telling him, stop. Church, let's get back to the basic. It is not about how loud you pray. It is about the authority behind your words. You did not hear me. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Because situations listen to authority. What does it say? Hallelujah. I have granted you. Let me show you. Let me give you some examples of authority. And so that we understand why Authority is very powerful. Amen. Glory be to God. I said glory be to Jesus. Amen. Here, Mark 1 and 22. These are some of the examples of authority. The Bible says what? It says, and they were astonished. See, this guy was, I can imagine that day how many preachers were preaching. Can you imagine, Pastor Brad? I don't know how many preachers were speaking. Maybe it was, the, because how, how, how the Jews used to preach uh, in their, in their, synagogues was that uh, they could pick from a certain portion of scripture and then you come and that is what you guys are going to be talking about, the teacher, that is why they call them uh, rabbis but here this man that had authority the bible says and they were what? and they were astonished at his teaching what is that that makes this man, because I believe this, some of the words, it, in fact, some of the people that had spoken these words, the people that were preaching before him, they had spoken the same words. When you walk in authority, ah, your words have something about them. That even if ten of you speak the same word, when yours come, your turn comes and you speak the same word, something about the authority behind your word moves people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And they were astonished uh, at his what? At his teaching. For what? For he taught them as one that had authority. And not as the scribes. So that means there are other guys that were preaching as well. <laughs> may, may, may you not belong to the, to the, to the generation of the scribes. Hey! There were others that were preaching as well. But when one that has authority stood and spoke the same word, I remember there were, there, I think it was, it, was a, it was a story one time and, and, and um, there was a man, a, a man of God, uh, Pastor Chris Chikuka, gave us the story. He, he said that at one moment there was a, a, a seminary. I think, not seminary, what do they call it now? Where, where? I think let's call it seminary. Let's call it seminary. Not the Catholic one, but seminary. And now in that seminary, of course, you know there are those students that you know that ha, when so and so discusses this this one, yeah, you know they are, they are always grades. Then there was this other one. His life was a life that was prayer and fasting. That was what his life was. 
I want to show you the difference. These ones were intellectuals. They were, they were the people that were doing research. They are the people that always had, the, they were updated. They had the, the, the lingua. You know? The, the, they, had, they had all that. That when the guy stands, before he introduces Matthew 16, he has given phrases of Greek and, and Roman and Hebrew. He interprets it from here and twists it like this. By the time he gets to Matthew 16, you're like, hi. Then there was this guy that all his life, well, he had one thing about him. Prayer and fast. So one day, the, 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 the leader has a seminar in which they are talking about uh, Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd. So of course, the first team that arrives were the scribes. Open your Bible here. See, when he begins to explain, you see Matthew 23, by, I mean Psalms 23, by the time Psalms, you see, and then he begins to release all grammar, you see, the, the Psalms is of course derived from, you know, he's giving all this, uh, and, and by the time to get, he gets to Matthew 23, everyone is like, so, yeah, they, they are impressive. Then this guy comes, the guy that was prayer and fasting, I'm sure, I'll tell you what authority does, <laughs> The guy just opened Psalm 23. And by the time he began speaking, you see, in fact, he did not have a lot of English. He did not have a lot of lingua. He did not have that in his sleeves. But he had authority. By the moment he was in chapter Psalms 23, he had just gone to verse number 2. People were already on the floor. They were already rolling. They were already crying. They were already asking God, Father, oh, oh. They were already praying for the they were, they were, The presence of God had hit them. Aye. So, of course, afterwards, after the seminar is done, the scribes come to him. Say, ah. What is it that we we tried? We we stood and spoke. We stood and 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 and, and gave justice to Psalm 23. But all they did was a hand clap, and that was it. But for you, when you stood, and you 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 are just going through. You just went verse one. By the time it was verse two, people were already on the floor. People were already the presence of God had hit them. Then this guy said, "The problem is that the difference between us is that." You were preaching Psalms 23. I was preaching the shepherd of Psalms 23. When, when, when a man stands in authority, oh, when a man stands in authority, there is something that uh, in the next time you stand before people, in the next time, let me tell you, don't fear who goes ahead of you. They may have doctorates. They may have. Don't fear. Uh, make sure you have the something. Make sure you have the shepherd with you, huh? because when you are with authority, uh, I say when you are with authority, uh, it is authority that will begin to touch people. Uh, when, when, when you speak with authority, uh, it is authority that goes and heals people. Uh, no wonder the demon spoke and said, uh, "Paul, we know." Because in hierarchy he has authority. Jesus we know. Because even that one has authority. But who are you? Who are you? When authority is asking questions. Well let me tell you ladies and gentlemen. Mountains move because of authority. Your situation is going to bow down. Because of authority from your tongue. Oh ladies and gentlemen. Let me introduce you to a generation of authority. The world is not ready. The world does not want to hear your good lingua. The world is not out there to listen to the music that you play or the good instruments, though it is okay because I also love good sound. But what moves people is the authority behind the word you speak. What moves people is the authority behind the song you sing. You may sing the same song, but when authority decides, 
uh, to step out from the microphone uh, and begin to touch hearts. Uh, cancer has to go. Uh, demonic oppression has to leave uh, because that is the essence of authority. Uh, when he says, I give you authority uh, to trample over snakes and scorpions. Uh, no, everyone can say in the name of Jesus. Uh, but when you stand in authority, uh, authority comes out from your tongue uh, and begins to trample on snakes and scorpions. Uh, you just say in the name of Jesus. Uh, but unknown to you, uh, in the world of the spirit, uh, in the spiritual realm, uh, authority is taking a walk. Uh, authority is visiting families. Uh, authority is turning around captivities. Uh, authority is opening doors. Uh, uh, my brother and sister, uh, that is why as the ecclesia, uh, go back to the place of prayer. Go back to the place of fasting uh, because fasting unveils uh, the key of authority. Your situation has not been moving because it had not yet picked the frequency of authority. Let it pick authority. It will not waste time. Ah, See, I was reading this scripture. Let me, let me, let me read it for you. Ah, I was reading this portion of scripture. And it is interesting. Hallelujah. Very, very interesting. Ah, we are in Matthew 21 and 23. Now this is when we understand what authority is. Ah, it says, and when he had come into the temple, ah, the chief priests and the elders of the people came unto him as he was teaching ah, and said, by what authority do you do these things? But let me tell you, hallelujah, by what of, see, whatever you're doing, it is authority that endorses what you do. By what authority, hmm, by what authority do you do these things? Oh, <laughs> by the time we're through with these 40 days of prayer and fasting, <laughs> you shall have an endorsement of authority. By what authority do you do these things? And who gave you this authority? In verse 24, and Jesus answered and said to them, I also will ask you one thing, which if you tell me, I also likewise will tell you by what authority I do these things. We, when, when you are with authority, heaven backs you up. No wonder. Men like Elijah that were given to a life of consecration in prayer and fasting. He could stand after breakfast. And an army of 150 armed men. Not just men, but armed men. With spears, with swords, with shield. Come and face him and say, man of God. Come, the king wants you. And then he looks at them and says, If I'm a man of God, let fire consume. And they are destroyed. Because they did not have etiquette of introducing themselves. To yeah, 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 yeah. See, well, sometimes I look and say, Ah, this man, this man, Chai. When I get to heaven, one of the men I want to have an audience with is, 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 is Elijah. I ask him, Sir, these men just offended you and you called fire at... at, at he took, the Bible says, he took the, the third captain, had to approach him respectfully. Sir. Then he said, okay. Because he said, sir. Even the angel endorsed it. The angel said, it's okay. Go with him. <laughs> See, enough of the, of the church being a place of ridicule. We are going back to the place of authority. I said, we are going back to the place of authority. It is where we belong and that is our portion. In the name of Jesus. I say in the name of Jesus. If you hear me shout amen. Glory be to God. I say glory be to Jesus. Amen. And when you read through all of them. See. For example. See how powerful authority is. Matthew. Sorry. Luke 7. Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7. It's a very interesting story. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 7. And um, we are going to read from verse number 2. Luke 7 and verse number 2. It says, And a certain centurion servant who was dear to him was sick uh, and ready to die. And when the centurion heard of Jesus, he sent unto him the elders of the Jews, beseeching him, that he would come and heal his servant. 
And when they came to Jesus, they besought him instantly, saying that he was worthy for whom he should do this. For he loves our nation and he has built us a synagogue. And then Jesus went with them. And when he was now not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying unto him, Lord, trouble not thyself, for I am not worthy that thou should enter unto my roof. Wherefore, neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee, but say a word, and my servant will be healed. For I am a man set under authority, having under me soldiers. This is how powerful authority is. And when I said to one, go, he goes. And to another, come, he comes. And to my servant, do this. And he does it. And Jesus, when Jesus had the things, he marveled and, and turned about and said, and to the people following him, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, not even in Israel. Can you imagine? This centurion had an understanding of authority. See, your faith is moving to another level. You, 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 I have news for I say, you, you, you. If there is anything, do yourself a favor. Do yourself a favor. Hallelujah. Jesus says, I have not seen faith like this in Israel. Ah! Because this man understood what authority is. Jesus said, I have not yet seen faith like this in Israel. It is called the key of authority. That is what fasting and prayer releases to you. That you speak and it happens. You send forth and it goes. You say come and it comes. Oh. <laughs> you say go and it goes. You say come forth. Oh. I see prayers being revolutionized in this season. I see men that are going ah. You will stand. Oh my goodness. See. 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 see how. Now, now I understand why men. Mom gave us a story of why men like Archbishop, the late Archbishop Benson in Dahosa. Why men could stand and command aeroplane. Ah, this guy comes. They gave us the story. Hallelujah. This guy came and he was let to check in. And then when he got to the check in, the plane was just taking off. Hmm. He just stood aside and said, Father, you know I'm your servant. I have to preach the gospel. So in the name of Jesus, I command the plane, wherever you're going, I have not yet sat inside. Come back for me. And then he checked in. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, 17 minutes. Somebody says 17 minutes. Suddenly when the plane was going, the pilot discovered there was a leakage or something in the plane. He said, Ladies and gentlemen, due to this and this, we are circling back. <laughs> and the plane got to the airport just because one man used what they call authority. This was one man, if you had, if you vexed him, I remember there are many stories about him. There, there were, let me give you one or two more. There was also another story whereby he had built the church, his, the, mini, the cathedral that he had built. At that time, he was the first, amongst the first fathers in Nigeria to have a congregation of almost 5,000 people. Now, he had built a church and according to the regulations of the, of the flying authority, the Nigerian air, airspace or something like that, you are not supposed to build it beyond a certain distance, a certain height. See, this man did not hear those things. He built, <laughs> he built the cathedral beyond that height. So the minister then summons him. He comes and tells him, because you've built this church beyond this height, and because of that, you are disrupting the frequencies of the aeroplanes. We are pulling down the building. This man also stands and says, because you have interrupted. <laughs> because you've chosen to interrupt my peace, I am firing you from your place. Ah. 24 hours. Not next month. 24 hours. There was an investigation that was going on and this minister's name came up. See, as we are getting into prayer and fasting this time, oh, you are going to summon certain things. You are going to call back certain things. Uh, 
and you are going to see them by your eyes. Oh, you shall see it happening. No, no, no. It is because you are not yet entered in the venture of authority. You are not yet stepped in the place called authority. I am ministries. We have something called a mystery of authority. As long as we are seeking God, as long as we are genuinely seeking God from the place of prayer and fasting, we are going to wield authority. I was talking about the disciples the other time, the apostles and these men. How does a shadow explain it to me in the medical encyclopedia? How a shadow can heal sickness? But because these men were in authority, it was not a shadow. It was not handkerchief. It was authority behind what they were doing. That is why men were healed. That is why people were delivered. Because these men walked in authority. I believe this is where the church has to go. I am. We cannot be. See, see. Praise the name of the Lord. We have endured. I don't know about you. We have endured all sorts of ridicule. We have endured all sorts of abuses. We cannot miss out on the place of authority now. Oh, if the Simon Peters, uh, men that were afraid, Peter, Peter, let me tell you, my brother, Peter, praise the name of the Lord, Peter on Friday, uh, on a Friday, was saying, I don't know Jesus. Was the same Peter after 15 days uh, that was standing uh, and saying this Jesus whom you crucified uh, is the same one that rose again. Uh, what was the difference between the two? It was the same Peter. It was the same language uh, but the difference was authority. Go and tarry in Jerusalem uh, until when the spirit of God uh, shall descend upon you uh, for he shall endure you with power from on high uh, and then you shall be witnesses to me. Uh, in Jerusalem, uh, in Capernaum, uh, and to the rest of the world. Uh, these men, I believe, uh, went and separated themselves uh, in a time of prayer and fasting. Uh, and my brothers and sisters, uh, 40 days is all you need. 40 days is all you need. 40 days is all you need. Oh, the world has not yet seen it. 40 days is all we need. To turn around certain stories. Peter. Timid. Peter. Suddenly stands out. Ah. My goodness. Why? Because the place of prayer and fasting. Is a key to authority. Hallelujah. I pity the Christian that does not pray and fast. I pity Hallelujah. Because it is not just you mortalizing the flesh, but it is you quickening your spirit man. And when your spirit man is quickened and is alive, he suddenly becomes aware of certain things in the spiritual world that are not yet, were not yet able to be revealed to him because it was still the flesh. Somebody say, I'm going to seek God. Glory be to God. Amen. Praise the name. Number two. Why is prayer and fasting so important? Why? What is the essence of prayer and fasting? Number one, it is not just authority. But number two is that it grants you access to certain realms. It gives you access Hallelujah. It grants you access. Second Kings chapter number six. It gives you access. Oh, I'm so excited about this season of prayer and fasting. I don't know about you, my brother and my sister. <laughs> Woo oh my goodness. Second Kings chapter number six. Hallelujah. Glory and glory be to God. Oh my God, my God, hallelujah. Second Samuel, Second Kings chapter 6. And we are now down in verse. Okay. See what the Bible says. 
Second Kings chapter number six. And we are now down in verse number eleven. Therefore, the heart of the king of Syria was so troubled for this thing. And he called his servants and said unto them, Will you not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? And one of the servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha, the prophet that is in Israel, tells the king of Israel the words that you speak in your bed chair. <laughs> Did you hear that, Pastor Brown? <laughs> This guy releases an instruction in, you know, uh, 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 Apostle Kenneth spoke to us that Sunday and he said, kings built their palace in such a way that he had special rooms. If he needed to meet his military advisors, it is not where the cooks go. <laughs> if it is military advisors, it is a special room where they meet. Eh? So, this king had devised a program in a special room that no one can access. Suddenly, they tell him, no, sir, there's no one, there's none of us betraying you. But there's a man who picks what you speak in your secret room. This man is called Elisha. It is, why? It is called accessing. It is called accessing. <laughs> oh, ah, you don't know how powerful it is when you get to the place of prayer and you are accessing realms you are seeing you are seeing something that to the ordinary eye you they cannot see it but you are seeing it is called access they told the king sir please we are innocent the issue is here there is a man even when you speak in silence this man picks it in your bedchamber he picks every conversation and he relates it to the king of Israel. <gasps> oh my God. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the name of you. I told you we are called an ecclesia. We are called a cabinet. You see, when we say church, people have weakened church to think, ah, it is you lifting up your hands and shouting hallelujah and singing a few songs and sitting and at times dozing off when they are preaching. It is <laughs> <laughs> it is beyond that it is beyond you coming at times you sit in church and you are asking God all these questions God why God why are, are you unfair it is beyond that. you are called ecclesia you are a cabinet Amen. hallelujah you are a cabinet that heaven is revealing information to and that is the power of prayer and fasting. Glory be to God. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. So, access is what gives a man information that otherwise is supposed to be secret. I don't know about you, but I, I'm going beyond, I, I don't know, me, my life. Hallelujah. I told God I don't want to be an ordinary pastor. I don't want to be ordinary Christian. I don't want to be the person that just says praise the Lord and it is amen. No. Let there be something about my life. Hallelujah. Amen. That is why God is telling us to get into the place of prayer and fasting. But it gets more interesting. You thought that maybe that was all Elisha could do. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 13, and he said, go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore, send he hither horses and chariots and a great host. Can you imagine because of one man? <laughs> Tell your neighbor, you do not know that you are this dangerous. And they came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, Behold, a host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And the servant said unto him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? 16. For he answered, this is Elisha now. Here are men that hold realms, that have access to realms. Elisha tells him, fear not. 
For what? For they that be with us are more than them that be with them. Can you imagine? And it was not enough. And Elijah did what Elijah said. Let me, let me show you a bit. Let me show you a bit about what I'm talking about. I love this guy. This guy is called, he was a demonstrator. Yeah, 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 yeah. He told him, fear not. For them that are with us are more than in them. Say, but, but no, that is not enough. You may not, you will not believe it when I tell you. So let me open your eyes that you will see. Ah, hallelujah. And Elisha prayed, oh Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. And behold, a mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elijah. Pause. Question. 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 Since when? I can imagine the proximity of Elisha to this man was how I'm standing with you, Pastor Brian. And this young man is telling Elisha, Sir, these men have surrounded us. Elisha just said, you, you, you do not know, young man, it seems, <laughs> young man, it seems you are still a novice in these things. Let me, let me, let me try and ascend with you to the realm where you have to, you have to operate from. He said, Lord, please show this young man. Imagine, close proximity. But when the man opened the eyes, Elisha was on a mountain with chariots of fire surrounding Physically, he was next to him here. But spiritually, there was a realm Elisha accessed. That in that realm, it was a realm of war. And when Elisha stood in that realm, he was the boss in that realm. And chariots of fire were surrounding him. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. How do you explain it? How do you explain it? Physically, you are here walking with him. But in the spiritual realm, he is on a mountain somewhere. And in that realm, angels and chariots are waiting for a command. And it is called access. It is called access to realms. Be the kind of person that physically they will see you as Apostle Jacob. But when it is issues to deal with nations, there is a different you that appears. There is a different you that is somewhere sorting out certain issues. <laughs> it may just be a simple prayer of, oh God. <laughs> oh God. You see, you see, the, the, the same story about mom, the same story about Archbishop Benson in Dahosa. Amen. And, and I, I think I shared with you the story. There was a meeting of wizards and witches, not just Nigeria, worldwide, that was coming to Nigeria. Wizards and witches were coming to Nigeria. For a convention. Now, now we all know. Hallelujah. We all know when they speak about the regions of sorcery and witchcraft. Of course, they will mention India. They will mention the West. And of course, they will mention the West African coast. Because th that place is also a very powerful marine altar. So one of the professors of voodoo and witchcraft had convened a meeting for all wizards and sorcerers and witches to meet in Nigeria. So when Ida also had it, he went and challenged it on national television. <laughs> he said, I challenge the professor who called for that voodoo meeting. Let us have a contest on radio. On TV. Let us have a contest on TV. Not radio. On TV. So, The television, of course, you, you, you know how journalists love that. That is grapevine for gossip. That is, ah, they are going to make money. Content. That time there was not yet Facebook and internet and YouTube. Inter internet was there, but YouTube, YouTube not yet. The, so, the television show was on. On one side, man of God, Archbishop Benson Idahosa. On the other side <laughs> was the guy that was introducing the voodoo and all that. So, the guy began, of course, he was talking, was even giving biblical reference. You see, even in the Bible, they call them demons. They are good demons. They are bad demons. Ba, 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 ba. He, did it. he spoke all he spoke. Uh -huh. When he was done, <laughs> it was Idahosa's time. Idahosa just said, I, I'm not going to explain myself. He opened. What, what is that scripture? 
Uh, Exodus. Exodus, what? Exodus 22. Suffer not a witch to live. He read it and closed his Bible. I said, son, now, I want to ask you a question. <laughs> because me, if, if you're a witch, I'm going to kill you. He <laughs> said, the Bible says, suffer not for a witch to live. So he asked him, sir, if you say you're a witch, I'm killing you. You are going to. <laughs> so, sir, answer me. Are you a witch? Hey. Of course. This man, because he knew who Idahosa was, <laughs> he had killed, because that guy, when he said, you shall die. That guy for him, he does not say, he does not have seen us prayer for witches. If you have been to rise in village and he's on the place, you shall die. <laughs> ah, that is it. They will bury you. They will go for your funeral. So it seems he had heard of him. So, it also read, suffer not a witch to live. He closed and said, sir, I want one thing. Are you a witch or you are not? Answer me. That is what I want. Because if you are a witch, we prepare your funeral. <laughs> Did he answer? The man refused to answer. <laughs> he played around. He refused to answer. Now, unknown to them on the television, by that time, the president that was on was watching. Who's the president right now that is on right now? What's the president? Who's the president right now? Huh? Buhari. Yes, Buhari, because he was, he was the president before in that time. A Muslim. Who is the president on right now? Okay, the one, the, no, not this one, but the one, the one before. That's Buhari. So, Buhari was, was watching the contest. <laughs> and when he saw the outcome of the contest, <coughs> he wrote to the Nigerian embassies to cancel any visa of any witch that was supposed to be coming into the country. He cancelled them. That's how the show, the, 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 the meeting of wizards and witches was cancelled because men had access. But that one does not just come because you wake up in the morning and can command. It comes because there is prayer and there is fasting. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm telling you, you do not know the potency that you carry. It's just because you look at yourself and you, you, you look at the, the events around your life and that is how you, you interpret your life to be. No. I've discovered it's beyond what the eyes see. With the ecclesia, we sit in realms. <clears throat> that when you pray, you are sent to that realm and command issues in that realm. Ladies and gentlemen, that is what it is. That is how the ecclesia rules on the earth. And that is why Jesus tells the disciples, and you are Peter, and on this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. Shall not even in any way prevail. Because the church, the ecclesia, the cabinet of God, is something that is beyond it is not what you think we are. Glory be to God. We are a terror in the camp of the enemy. If only the church would rise up in the place of unity and challenge and challenge themselves from the place of mediocrity to the place whereby God expects them to rule. We can command results. The results are not far away. I said the results are not far away. Hallelujah. Actually, the absence of a, the ecclesia is why men who are frauds are busy having a filled day. It is not that they are powerful. It is the ecclesia that is asleep. Let the ecclesia rise. These men will have no place. I'm challenging us. We're in a day of, we are in, right now, it's already, the, the, today is the 11th day of prayer and fasting. Hallelujah. It is not yet too late. If you have not yet joined, it is not yet too late. We are seeking God. We are seeking God. In the place of his, seeking his face is where even him, he says, I love them that love me. And then, 
that diligently seek me shall find me. Lift up those hands. to him every weakness and a complaining father we come this morning it is true we had not yet known who we are but yet you tell us that you shall build your church and the gates of hell shall not prevail father we come this morning it is our prayer, O oh God. Give us the willing heart. Give us the obedience. Give us the willingness. Give us the grace. In these days that you've called us to seek you. Because without access, the church cannot stand. Without authority, the church cannot operate. I pray that, Lord, you shall grant us a hunger and a desire by which we shall seek your face. For only and only then shall your glory be so tangible in our midst, especially in these end times. Take all the glory, take all the adoration. Be glorified, be exalted. For indeed, it is only by the authority by which it is of God that the church can move. And that which has confounded nations, bondages will be broken. Sicknesses will be healed. Delays will be removed. Barricades will be smashed. Strongholds will be broken. Only by the church that has gone back to the place of prayer and fasting. Father, we thank you. And we give you all the glory. For this prayer has been made in the name that is above every other name. In Jesus' mighty name. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Celebrate the man of God. And also help me celebrate the spirit of God for being faithful. Hallelujah. Pastor Robert, thank you for the word. Pastor Brian, thank you for the word. God bless you. Hallelujah. A quick one. If you have your ministered seat, bring it on the altar.